Yeah, we know. How on earth could anyone have the gall to claim they can actually find the Garden of Eden? Once again, the answer is in Jubilees, with abundant support from other sources, even Torah. We don't say so, Jubilees does, and many other sources. Welcome to Answers in Jubilees, produced by The God Culture. Well, we thought that too, by the way, and had no intention initially of heading in this direction. We were searching for Ophir, and we found it, and were satisfied moving into our flood series even. And though there were different elements leading to the Garden of Eden that we kind of left there as the same land, we did not believe we would ever make the connection firmly, especially not in such a clear and indisputable way. However, many Filipinos continued to tell us that this land was not just the land of gold, Ophir, but the actual location of the garden. Now, before you start thinking in the wrong direction, no, the garden is not up here on what we call land today. There was a flood, and there's a lot more to the story. Now, we will show you, even the Hebrew word tells you, the garden is enclosed. We will locate it in this video, and again, there is far more support in our Solomon's Gold series, but for this series, this will suffice and you'll have enough to know the truth. We're going to set some foundation here first, but at the end of this video, we are going to map out Jubilees again, just on this border to fully define it, and the location of the Garden of Eden will become proven very firmly. We are 100% confident, especially now that we know Jubilees tests as Torah, that the Garden of Eden can be found in the Philippines, and no one has been able to disprove this, nor even take a logical crack in unwinding our case for the Philippines as Ophir and the Garden of Eden in over four years now. All we have gotten is really childish, illiterate ridicule and nothing else, a parsing of words and just amazingly, amazingly childish behavior. It simply is, and we do prove this case. Don't think so? Disprove it. We dare you to try anyone. Now, this draws on knowledge we gained over years of research, and really, if one wants to know the full evidence, watch Solomon's Gold series from part one to the end, and it's all there, or better yet, get our paperback, The Search for King Solomon's Treasure, or if you like dynamic photography, get our Ophir Philippines coffee table book, available at ophirinstitute.com. Both are supported by a 300-page source book, as is this video, really. And this mapping is published in our Book of Jubilees, the Torah Calendar, available on the same site or at bookofjubilees.org, and the ebook is free. Let's find this enigma. So many have sought for so many centuries that has been right there on the edge of our noses all along. By the end of this video, you will know. Let's begin with Genesis 2, verse 8 and 9. And Yahuwah Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Now also note, verse 9 is on the screen, where is the tree of life? That's why we put it there. It is in the midst of the garden of Eden. Always has been, always will be. Nowhere else. Anyone trying to move it is not following the Bible. Understand that. Let's take a deeper look into the Hebrew for this garden that is eastward. Does this say more than we have been seeing? For starters, this word gan is not simply garden, but a huge clue that many have missed for many centuries even. 
For the word means garden, but also enclosure, an enclosed garden. The Garden of Eden is not open, and we know that because Scripture tells us it's enclosed, and it must be because the angels only guard one entrance. So if it has an entrance, it's enclosed, period. Means, I mean, come on, angels can fly. So if it's, they're able to guard it from the other angels even entering, especially fallen angels or Satan himself, well, guess what? That means it's got to be enclosed, and they cannot get in but through the one entrance, which is why the angels are only placed there and nowhere else. Now, this should be extremely easy for scholars, yet we have not seen a single one understand this, it seems. Now, we know this garden was planted eastward in Eden, the English translation says. However, this word interpreted eastward is far more specific and telling and never needed the preposition added as in because it carries such indefinition. The word is Kedim in Hebrew, same as the Mount of Kedim or Mount of the East. This is a very ancient word. I mean, this is Genesis 2 we're talking about here, and it bears every one of these definitions. Put them together, and you already know much more in way of directions to the garden. It means east or orient. That is the east of the world and actually always has been. Who decided that was east? Yahuwah did when he planted this garden. Look at this language. Antiquity. Front. Because it is on the front of Shem's border on the east side. We already saw in the directions of the mapping of Jubilees. That which is before. Before what? Before everything. Before time. Before time. From the front or east. Mount of the east. These are all garden narratives, folks. Because the Mount of the East is in the Garden of Eden as well. But, let her be here, nails it. Ancient time, afford time, ancient, from of old, earliest time. That's creation language. Anciently, of old, how old? From the beginning, east or orient. As an adverb, as it is used here. Again, it does not require the word added as in, in Eden. Doesn't need to be there. That was added. Eastward, appropriate. To or toward the east. The garden was planted within the earth, enclosed in the Orient. That's their mindset. But remember, the KJV was interpreted in the Dark Ages. They had already lost much, especially the Book of Jubilees, which has always been Torah. Now, there is no language here that could reach any other conclusion, but don't worry, exact directions coming your way. The garden was planted to or toward the East Orient, period. This is Genesis 2, which gives even more definition. That is miraculous when you understand these words and locations. And watch our Rivers from Eden videos, and you will find this all ties even to those locations. And it concurs completely. No other theory on that topic makes even remote sense as they leave the Bible and then fail to go back and check what they think with what the Bible actually says because they don't match. Ours does. Every word of it. We call that a theory. This video is not theory. We will factually find the Garden of Eden. Verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. What is its purpose? To water the Garden of Eden. Find this river. Find the garden at its end where it is being watered. 
and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pisan. Now notice, that's not the Tigris nor Euphrates, which are not even guessed to be the Pisan, even ever. Just doesn't work. And that is the occult creation narrative between the Tigris and Euphrates, and it is absolute fraud. Doesn't fit the Bible, never should have been injected. See, the Hittichel, which is never the Tigris, in Scripture, which we prove out in the Parat, or Euphrates, mentioned in Genesis 2, cannot be the modern ones named after it. That one, anyway. Hittichel isn't even named Tigris. Doesn't ever, ever result in the Tigris in Scripture, period. Doesn't work. We prove that out. These are laughable assertions as both of those rivers could not have even existed prior to the flood as they require rain and snow melt. And to fit most theories, they'd also have to flow uphill. That's unscientific nonsense and all to justify an occult narrative. Yet verse 5 in chapter 2 just told us it did not rain before the flood. That also means no ice caps. And whomever out there is saying an ice cap is a river, <laughs> wow, how inept. Not in Hebrew, it's not. Why is Pisan first, though? Actually, it's at the end of the system in the Far East, but Hebrew reads right to left or east to west, thus first in the east. It is also the most significant of the tributaries in several ways. Again, watch our Rivers from Eden videos for full detail. And no, we will not allow anyone to start a debate without doing so on this video where we have not proven that out. So try, and you will be muted here, our channel, our rules. You'll have to respect that, and really doesn't matter if you don't. That is it which compasseth, surrounds, encircles the whole land, all of it, of Havila. We'll vet this word, but it means in ancient times before the flood, Havila was an island. It still is, and we'll show you. Where there is gold, but not just some gold, and the gold of that land is good. Now that in Hebrew is tall, meaning abundant, bountiful. This is the land of gold, which would become known as Ophir after the flood, the Philippines is number one in gold in all of history, period. There is delium. We test this. That's pearl. Never a biblical spice, or the Bible would say so, and it just doesn't, period. But pearl. Guess who leads the earth in all of history for the largest pearls? You guessed it, the Philippines. And the onyx stone. In ancient times, especially Egypt, they built with alabaster. But when tested... It's not what we call alabaster today. It is brown and yellow onyx stone, the ancient stone from Ophir especially. All these sources are found in our 300-page source book, which accompanies our books. Wait, the Philippines, specifically Ramblan, has the strongest onyx and marble stone on all of Earth. This really just required a simple testing, folks. That's all. No other land even emerges. No number two. The Philippines is number one in all three resources. It is the ancient Havila, land of Eve. Let's see. In the upper left, you can see the Hebrew word Hava, which is Eve's name. Her name was not Eve, and that is really a pathetic translation of nonsense, which obscures this association, whether intended or not. And to the right, Havila, a variant of Hava. You can even see in English, the two words are really the same word with a couple of letters added. To match Eve's exact curse in definition from the garden, childbirth one who suffers pain that brings forth. Wow! Find this land, and you find the Garden of Eden next to it. And this concurs with Jubilees. In our research, I'll mention this. 
We also found some Hebrew markers along the way, which provide directions to the Far East as well, and they tie to Ophir, the name of this same land after the flood, as ancient Havila and the Garden of Eden. Remember, the garden is not up here. It is enclosed within the earth and protected, and you and I are not getting in. Not yet. We will also release a video in a couple of weeks demonstrating it most certainly is still there. You'll see. Solomon overlaid the walls of the temple with the gold of Ophir according to 1 Chronicles. And then, in 2 Chronicles, something odd. The same writer. It now says, the walls were overlaid with the gold of Parvaim. What's that? Well, by application, it's the same as Ophir, obviously. A perfect clue to preserve this location as Perva or Parva means east. But more than that, even scholars have picked up on this being the same land as Ophir. But we can take that even further. As Genesis Apocryphon from the Dead Sea Scrolls tells us, Methuselah went to visit his father Enoch after Enoch was taken. How did he do that? Well, Enoch was gone, right? Well, some even try to say, and we'll deal with this in the next video, that Enoch was dead. Yet, this makes it clear, he was not. But in a physical existence, in a physical place, as the Garden of Eden always has been. Though already taken, Enoch was still alive and lived in the Garden of Eden, which Genesis Apocryphon calls... Parvaim, same place. This is the Garden of Eden. Then we found the Bible gold of Daniel, also. Essentially, the same word as Ophir, except one letter, and literally is not just the gold of Ophir, but the gold, by definition, of the Pisan River. What's that? That's the river from Eden which we just discussed, which waters the garden, in fact. It surrounds the land of gold called Havila in ancient times, or the Philippines, Ophir, by the resources. So Upaz is also tied to the Garden of Eden. Now, this is already compelling, but we knew if we came out with only this, the naysayers would have a field day. We held this until we mapped the Book of Jubilees, and wow, we did not expect this, but it's been there all along. Very exact directions. Almost there, but what else do we know about this land of Eve before we map this out? Get out your Book of Jubilees, and we'll see how it matches Torah as it has every week so far in this study. Imagine that. You're going to find it through all 52 weeks, in fact. And yes, it expounds, it adds more detail, but in a very good way that in no way takes away from Torah, but enhances it and causes us to be able to understand it finally. Let's read chapter 3, starting verse 32. And on the new moon of the fourth month, Adam and his wife went forth from the Garden of Eden, and they dwelt in the land of Elda. Hmm, even sounds Filipino in name, but the name doesn't matter. In the land of their creation. Now let's skip to verse 35 here while we've got it open. Now he tilled the land as he had been instructed in the Garden of Eden. Wow. So, find Havila, the land of Eve, by name even, her curse, the place of exile bearing Eve's name varied to her curse from the garden, the first land of childbirth, in fact, you find the land of creation, ground zero for the creation event. It's the same. The resources match the Philippines with no one else in the running. The location will as well. Fast forward to chapter 4 in Jubilees, verse 29. And at the close of the 19th Jubilee, in the seventh week, in the sixth year thereof, Adam died, 
and all his sons buried him in the land of his creation. And he was the first to be buried in the earth. See, Jubilees clarifies Adam as the first man created earlier and the first man to be buried. As Genesis has always said that Adam was the first man. There is no scripture saying that there's a pre-Adamic race. That's not Bible. Now, yes, Abel died, and we don't know what happened to his body, but what we do know from this is he was not buried. Some say Eve died first, and also that is no basis that we find even. Adam was buried in the same land in which he was created, Havila, which we find as the Philippines. And again, this proves out even further. With this, we now know that Genesis 3.23 is very literal. When it tells us Adam was exiled from the garden to till the ground, what ground? The ground from whence he was taken, created. It's right there and Jubilees affirms it. See how Jubilees brings clarity to Genesis so many times over. So then what? Well, Yahuwah drove out the man, Adam and Eve, and he placed at the east of the garden cherubim. You don't really need the S there, as I am is already plural, but all the better. It's not just one angel. Even in the English, it's clearly at least two. And a flaming sword which turned every way, meaning it could keep the water out from the flood. The garden was not flooded, and we will get to that as well in a couple of weeks. To keep the way of the tree of life. That's important, even in Revelation. Again, we'll cover that. Which was still right there in the garden, not on some other plane of existence. Ooh, that's called Kabbalah, not Bible. It does not move. Now, we'll deal with that also in a couple of weeks. So, we already had several clues leading up to this, and then Jubilees happened. Wow. We knew this was in the East Orient, an enclosed garden, next to Havila, which proves as the Philippines in resources. This is where Adam and Eve lived, where Enoch lived, where Methuselah lived lived at least within traveling distance in those days. It's really where Noah lived and where he built the ark. Again, we have a little teaser video and we're talking about Noah building the ark in the Philippines, not it landing there. We never say that. In fact, we clearly say it where it lands and we have a whole video on that. It is the most ancient land. This land transcends time. From creation, it is surrounded by the Pisan River, which you will find on the ocean floor in the Oceanic Trench System. Again, we prove that out, not here, so don't try to debate in ignorance. We will not allow that on this video. It is the land of gold. That's the Philippines in all of history, period. You can't dispute that because it's fact. The land that leads in pearl. That's the Philippines, and again, can't dispute it. The largest pearl in all of history is found in the Palawan Sea. The number two is found in the Palawan Sea. The number three, the number four, the number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten, all the way back to the 1930s when they first started keeping record, which was 15 kilos, also found in the Palawan Sea, period. The end, done, Philippines, number one. And the land that leads in the onyx stone. Philippines again, number one in all three. Also, this land is the same land as Ophir. Uh, we are identified firmly as the Philippines. Already, much to go on. But now, let's get down to business. Remember week two, we covered Shem's mapping, and it leads to the Garden of Eden on his eastern border with Ham in the far east. That's nowhere near Africa nor the Middle East. Sorry. In fact, we never entered Africa in these directions for Shem, and it has to be in Shem's territory. And we already left the Middle East at that point, and we head east beyond 
India, according to Noah's recap. Even so, not even remotely, possibly Africa, nor the Middle East. Those are horrible guesses. Now, let's zoom in on this border with a nice mapping. This is awesome. Here it is, and now we'll show how we read this. Turn to Jubilees chapter 8, verse 16, and follow along from Shem's division, and then we'll cover Ham's, don't worry, and this will all be very clear. Now, we are on the banks of the Gihon River, the ancient river from Eden, another one, which surrounds the whole land of Ethiopia, which is the continent of Africa. So that's where we are at this point. If you read before, which does not enter Africa, but surrounds it, and it is its continental shelf today by definition. And now, 16. And it extendeth towards the east till it reacheth the Garden of Eden. So, far east to the Garden, and again, in the recap of Noah, he says it's beyond India, east of India. And the Garden is just north of the southeast border between Shem and Ham, and this will be better defined next. We know, Noah tells us, again, this is beyond India. That's not Africa, and that's not the Middle East. Neither work, and the occult Middle East legend, come on, quit trying to force occult narratives into the Bible, scholars. It's inept. To the south thereof, to the south, and from the east of the whole land of Eden. Again, the distinction is clear in these directions. The Garden of Eden is not the land of Eden. In these directions, it's clear. Nor in Genesis 2, really, if you truly map it, read it, and understand it. It is the North Pole. Some try to say Eden is the name of the whole earth, and you know what? That actually works, too. Wouldn't actually change anything. Uh, you could fit it, but we don't see that here. We see it specified, and we cover this in part two, and especially uh, part two, especially, but even three and four, we touch on it. Um, that's where the direction started and ended for Shem's territory. So it is a point. It is, it is a plot point. It's not the entire earth. So the garden is just north of this border. Remember, too, Noah confirmed like four times in Shem and then in Ham at least twice. So this is not remotely fuzzy. And in Ham, we begin in Africa and have to get to the right of the garden. We'll read it in a second. How do we do that? Well, Noah was brilliant. The only way that is possible without stumbling over Shem's territory, already mapped and very firm, because there is a curse on either brother who takes land from the other. So Noah would be clear. The only way is to head west, not east across South America, across the Southern Hemisphere. That's it. There's no other way. You can see Noah even formed a little hitch to affirm this in making the border just south of the garden. Not on the garden. Not right on it. But south of it. So it's the only way it could work. You can't really read the directions any other way, especially not when next you are east of the Indian Ocean, and you head west into the Indian Ocean, and you head west again, and then north. But there's no way to make this work any other way. You just completely mess up the directions if you try. Still in chapter 8, let's read verse 22. And for Ham came forth the second portion. Beyond the Gihon, the Gihon River, the ancient river from Eden, towards, which surrounds Africa, so we're in Africa here, towards the south, the southern hemisphere, that's the south, to the right of the garden, the Garden of Eden. There you go. And it extendeth towards the south, See how this matches Shem's, which also located the garden just north of this border. Now Ham came to the garden and went south to get to the border. 
This makes us go west in Ham's directions, in fact, to get to the right of the garden. That's the hitch that I talked about. And it extended to all the mountains of fire. Now, in this part of the world, we know where we are. It cannot be all volcanoes, but a specific chain somewhere in Southeast Asia. And boom, Indonesia just happens to continue Noah's name for their 147 volcanoes known in Javanese as Ganung Ganung Api, or in English, mountains of fire. Wow! They form a perfect natural border. In fact, as a string of volcanoes, this sets not only this southeast border between Shem and Ham, but also defines the east border as essentially the ancient Pisan River, lined up with the Philippine Trench. This is the Genesis 2 land, folks. The Garden of Eden is just north of this border, of the northwest volcano of this chain, which serves to split Borneo into two right at Saba, Malaysia. Yes, Noah did that. He split that island or so they call it. By the way, there is great evidence that Saba has always belonged to the Philippines as well, and a case is being made right now for that. Just north of this border is the Garden of Eden, and just to the east of it, as the angels were placed only on the east side, is the entrance to the garden somewhere. We don't know where, and we aren't really looking for it as we do not wish to face off with at least two of the most terrible angels. This place is the Garden of Eden within the earth below the Sulu Sea. Now it's not in the sea, nor have we ever said so. It's enclosed, remember? This is confirmed in Ham's directions again as we move forward as we next head west into the next sea, which has to be the Indian Ocean, nothing else, and then cross Africa into the Sea of Maug, the South Atlantic, named for Ham's wife, which becomes the Ethiopian Sea until the 1800s, and then named for Cush, Ethiopia, same, which, again, must be the South Atlantic. That's what maps say all the way up until the 1800s. This is not rocket science. And nothing else as the final turn for Ham is to the north from there, ending in Gadir or Cadiz, Spain. So we know it's the South Atlantic, and we know before it's the Indian Ocean, and we know before we were in Southeast Asia in Indonesia. It's really not hard if you follow directions, and even if you want to go forward and then look back, make sure they all tie. They do in this mapping, otherwise they become discombobulated. Now, we know exactly where we are if we follow the directions, and it matters not whom agrees with every definition of every marker as long as they stick with these directions. It's obvious. The only resistance we have ever seen to this, in fact, is mere ridicule, not logic, as one has to abandon such to deviate from common sense to go against this. Then Noah confirms again, as we covered in laying out Ham's southern hemisphere, from the Gihon, basically it surrounds Africa, so we're talking from Africa, to the right of the garden in the far east. So there you go. The Garden of Eden is just below the Philippines, under the Sulu Sea. One cannot fudge these directions to Africa nor the Middle East, which they mention both prior, already ruling both out as options. Even the Book of Enoch concurs with Jubilees on this, as does Genesis, and we cover far more detail than just this. But we're trying to keep this video relatively short to fit in to this series. Any scholar heading there really needs the Book of Jubilees because though they do not intend, they are misleading many. 
Also, there is a doctor out there who struggles to read a map and tries to inject that passage where pagans pray to the east as supposedly our worship calls us an abomination. (laughs) That doctor doesn't know how to read the Bible. We deal with this in our book as his praying to the east in that passage is the abomination in that passage. So, come on. He needs to learn how to read and follow a map. The garden can be found, and you just found it in about 30 minutes. Imagine what you can learn from hours of detail and content, proving this from multiple angles. Watch Solomon's Gold series or read our books for that. And again, we support that 384-page case in the search for King Solomon's treasure with a 300-page source book. So absolutely significant and monumental indeed. You can know this truth and teach others. We hope you have learned something from these answers in Jubilee's videos. Yah bless to all. The Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, named by the temple priests in Qumran as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilees also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full test for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes, in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288-page quality paperback has a high-resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook, or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.